next maker is uh, Nicole Catrid from the Exploratorium. And she d- does a lot of interesting things, but uh, uh, she'll talk about her work. But I saw some of her work here a couple years ago, and we ended up uh, publishing an article in Make Magazine on her stroboscope. And she'll talk about time lapse and other things like that. Glad to have you, Nicole. I'm Nicole, and I, uh, I work with the Tinkering Studio here at the Exploratorium. And um, I'm going to show you some things that are related to time, but I'd like to show you kind of what led up to it. Um, and this, this, I think, sort of started me on an interesting path of uh, playing with light and optics. And it was really sort of accidental. Um, I made a birthday card for a friend, and I I painted a little cake on the inside of the card, and then I poked holes in the cover because I thought that I would get little spots of light to make it look like the candles were lit. And I accidentally made a little paper camera obscura. And I noticed that instead of just little spots of light, I had little tiny light bulbs that were um, being projected from the lamp above my desk. And then it was a step from there to realize that you could use a candle flame and actually get uh, candle, candle flames, pinhole images projected onto the cake. And I have a video I can show you that demonstrates this a little, a little better. But here you go. actually see them flickering. <laughs> so, thank you. so camera obscuras I, des- I decided are just absolute magic and this, uh, this ended up leading to another kind of camera obscura which you see here. The scale is slightly different but uh, it's got some things in common. This is, I call it a tilt shiftoscope. And uh, it, it basically creates tilt-shifted images of whatever you look at. And what that means is um, it makes really big things look like little toys. And the way it works is instead of a pinhole projecting an image, it has a really large uh, lens that projects a very big, bright image onto a screen, a glass screen, and the screen's tilted. And so only part of it's in focus. And it creates a a narrow depth of field which mimics the way that you would normally see a small thing. And again, I'll show you a picture because that's probably very hard to to imagine. But this is is actually my desk in the uh, Exploratorium workshop here. So (laughs) that's my workspace. (laughs) Uh, This is an image, uh, a view through the tilt shiftoscope of the the, um, geysers exhibit. And this is our metal racks, and it just looks like a dollhouse metal rack to me, which I think is magic. Okay, so that last thing made big things look small, and then this, uh, this is a pair of microscope goggles that make small things look big. Uh, I brought them in if if anyone would like to investigate them later, Um, and I also brought in some flowers and a feather, because you need something to look at, so... Uh, so that, that all, those are all sort of loosely connected, like, devi- you know, devices that let you see the world in a new way. And this was my next big project, um, which I got really obsessed with um, stroboscopic photography, which just is utter magic to me because it allows you to take a picture of something moving through space and time and to have this 
photographic record of it. And you, you can do something like this with a strobe light, but it's very hard to move things. Like, um, I'll show you some examples, but uh, this, this, this does not use a strobe light. This uses a mechanical strobe that was invented by this lovely man. His name is Jules Marais, and he's a French scientist. And this is actually, actually a picture of him uh, waving a stick, and it's a stroboscopic photograph, so you have a record of every movement that sticks made. And it, um, he used a mechanical strobe in front of a camera, and that, this is a mechanical strobe. This is my version. It's a little toy motor and a paper disc with a slot in it. So when you turn this motor on, the disc spins, the slot moves, and if you put it in front of a camera, uh, you can take these amazing photographs. So here's another illustration of the way it works. You can see the camera and the disc there. And normally when you do something like release a balloon, you, you know, it goes away, you don't see it, it's gone. Uh, when you take a, a photograph with this rig, you end up with a record of its path. And every time that slot passes in front of the camera, you get another layer added. So this um, was actually the very first picture we took where it was sort of like proof of concept that it would work. This is in the tinkering studio. Uh, we very quickly discovered you need a dark background because otherwise everything just is invisible. We immediately started playing with everything we could find. <laughs> Sticks, balls. This is, uh, this is Walter um, just throwing a ball and it's just, it's magic being able to see this, I think. And then the slightly more talented Luigi. <laughs> In other ways. <laughs> um, then we actually, we, so we, we brought it out of the tinkering studio to an open make. And uh, this was a couple years ago now, I think. But so we invited people to come play with it. And this is someone who's like a yo-yo um, a master. So he was doing tricks in front of it. And uh, this is Ryan with a plastic bag. Um, it's also amazing. It's just, I, I love seeing what people want to try with this camera. This is a friend doing a cartwheel. I love walking past it. It's actually on the floor now. And every time I walk past it, there's a new image of someone doing a headstand or a cartwheel or just sheer delight playing. Um, this was one of my favorite discoveries. Um, turns out, I didn't know this, but it turns out if you throw something up, when it falls back down, it'll make a symmetrical path. So this is a stick being thrown up and it rotates around and it falls down and it makes these amazing patterns. And I was just, just astonished when I saw this. Um, this is Walter, uh, we caught a balloon being popped. Again, me just releasing, releasing them. This is a paper airplane banking. Uh, just playing, with, again, playing with anything we could find. And I still, every time I go past it, I, whatever I have in my hands or, you know, I, I, I still play with it every time I see, I see it. Um, and then this is just in the process of uh, researching the uh, stroboscopic photography and researching that scientist, Jules Murray. I came across another, he was just totally brilliant man. And I, I came across another thing that he, he did where he was really interested in studying movement. And so he did an experiment in addition to his, uh, his uh, stroboscopic photography. He did an experiment where he took a shiny brass button this was the 1800s, they didn't have LEDs, and he put it on, uh, on somebody's hip. And then he had them walk, and he had two cameras taking a long exposure. So he ended up with two photographs of this button moving through space, and you combine them, you get a three-dimensional image. Um, so we decided to try this with light painting, and so these are uh, LEDs, and I, I have a little viewer.
So again, the best thing is just to see it yourself, but I have a viewer if anyone would like to see some of those experiments. And we did it, we did it with light paintings and we also did it with um, the stroboscopic photography. So uh, that's, that's it. So. <laughs>